Why would many Muslims consider insurance or getting involved in financial services traditionally haram? Every single person that I asked, life insurance is not haram to have. It's going to be $110. And then second week, uh, when people say, hey, I want to change my life, but my pastor says, just trust on God and get rich, get rich, and the poor get poor. It's a very different types of, of ideologies because sometimes we, you can't ignore the rules. Candidates to enter the financial services, they say, this is haram. This is against our religion. People don't understand what well, God knows what's in us. We respect prophet. We don't worship prophets. God will provide. So let's start unpacking this conversation. Interest is something where it could hurt some people. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And in this episode, we have a very good friend of mine, House Busi, from right now the Fort Lauderdale slash Miami South Flow area. And we're going to be talking about insurance. Is it haram or is it halal? And what do I know about that? I'm Christian, but I run across a lot of Muslim brothers and sisters out there, Muslim cousins, that uh, talk about, hey, man, I love to do this. I love to do insurance. I love to do financial services. But man, my religion prohibits me from doing so. So with that being said, speaking from that side of the world, because we all have the same great, 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 great grandfather. His name is Father Abraham. <laughs> he birthed many nations. Haas, welcome to the conversation, brother. Awesome, guys. Thank you, man, for having me. I appreciate it. For sure, man, for sure. So uh, before we jump into my questions, man, how, how did you get involved in the insurance business? Absolutely. Great question. Um, honestly, you know, uh, when it comes down to when you look at different cultures and different types of, uh, you know, I would not say religious cultures, you know, typically some different cultures get into different industries, right? Uh, Middle Easterns, you know, we tend to gravitate to certain different industries, many different, you know, you're Filipino. You remember you were telling me that, you know, Filipino moms or Filipinos are nurses, right? Majority of them are nurses. Sure. But, uh, sure. you know, I, I, I never knew, in a, you know, I never ever thought I'd be in this side of the world. Um, you know, I remember growing up, Oh, uh, you know, financially, I never understood money in, in that sense, right? Uh, school didn't teach me about money. College didn't teach me about money. So I was very curious about learning about, you know, finances and learning about money, learning about business. And, uh, you know, I got down to, I met my wife and she lived here down in South Florida. And uh, as we were getting to know each other, I went to dinner with a financial advisor because I was trying to get some advice in regards to what, we're, what works down here in South Florida, right? We had a conversation well, and he looked up at me, he goes, Hasa, I think you'd be great in the world of financial services. And I told him, look, man, I'm horrible in math. Forget about it. That was my answer to him, right? Because I'm like, yeah, numbers, yeah. man. Like, man you're, math. Good, you're good at the gym, right? You're yes, good at the gym. Yes. I know I you, was uh, like, uh, you're very good at the gym. Exactly. I said, I'm a muscle guy. I'm an ex-bodybuilder. That's all I want to do. But uh, he said, no, man. He's like, you, you're really good with people. Um, you're really good with people. You're curious about people. It seems like you're someone that wants to help people. I said, absolutely. I think generally, most people, generally, I'm sorry, want to help people. All right, want to you know want to be involved in people's lives, whether it's helping them financially, whether it's helping them you know with their with their body. With many trainers like to do that, Wh whatever we do, we're trying to help people. And from there, I said I got curious about the opportunity, and I went and uh, seen the opportunity, and I seen that it was a great opportunity to go out there and help people, educate people on protection, uh, defensive strategies with their money. Um, and then I, I got started. I got started. I didn't even think twice, honestly. I just seen that. I just said, you know what, I'm I'm gonna uh, go with my faith, and I uh, if I do the work. And I put uh, the faith in God of me you know, putting in my work, whatever God wants to happen is going to happen. And, and then from here, you know, we found, uh, we found success. And today, you know, me and my wife are doing the business together. So it was a complete accident. It wasn't expected. It wasn't something that I planned. I didn't wake up in the morning and say, this is what I'm going to yeah. do for a living, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, it was yeah. more so just, uh, it was kind of like almost like a, this is what you're going to do. And I accepted it. You know, when I, when I first uh, recruited my first uh, Muslim uh, faith, uh, faith background, his name was Nabil Khan. I, uh, I was at, I was actually leaving the gym, went into the protein bar in, in Chicago, leaving LA Fitness, going to the protein bar. And anyway, make a long story short, we built a friendship. And when he first got involved in financial services, he's always running things by his, by his, uh, his, his chic. And I'm like, oh, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm Christian, so I can, I can relate, I can understand. I like to run things to my pastor too as well. But, you know, I think today where the audience will win, you know, we're a faith and finance channel. And I learned from all sorts of faiths. Obviously, I draw a large majority from my own Christian faith, my own upbringing, and my own um, uh, 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 pros and cons of understanding money through the lens of, a, of the Bible. But if you look back into the different faiths we've learned from too as well, I've learned a lot from Mormons. I've learned a lot from Jewish. And today we get to learn from you, brother. We get to learn from Muslim, the Muslim faith. And the, the basic premise is that a, a lot of Muslims that we do end up having referrals to uh, either as clients or as potential candidates to enter the financial services, they say, this is haram. 
we can't earn our money this way. This is this is bad for our faith. This is this is against our religion. Our religion would not approve. And this reminds me of when people say, "Hey, I want to change my life, but my pastor says just trust on God and God will provide." So let's start unpacking this conversation. So why would it, why would many Muslims consider insurance or get involved in financial services traditionally? Haram. Yes. Yeah, so you know, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and of course, I want to say, you know, I'm not a scholar by any means, right? Uh, I'm someone that is definitely, I'm a very faithful individual. Uh, I definitely want to always do the right thing. Uh, I always like to say uh, Islam is perfect. Muslims are not. You know, I think we all have our different sins and, we, you know, different things of that nature. I think many faiths believe the same exact way. But, um, you know, most people will say, well, this is haram or a sin or frowned upon due to the fact of, you know, when you look at sales in general, right? Um, the, 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 the concept of riba, the concept of, of, of that is un unlawful or unfair or unjust uh, type of trade, right? Well, you know, when sometimes you go to, uh, let's say you're buying a car, right? And the car salesman, yeah. there's something wrong with the car, for example. Right. And the car yeah. salesman tells you, yeah, man, the car is perfectly fine, okay? Great car, great condition. And he knows on the other side, he knows that there's probably this car is not going to last for another four weeks, but still sells it <laughs> and telling you, that this is going to be, this car is great. It's a great condition. I, that is frowned upon, right? That For is sure. insane. I am, I am basically, I am what I'm doing to that person. I'm telling them, no, I'm not telling them the truth, right? So when we get into about the insurance side of the business, you have to be very transparent. I say typically in our, in our religion, transparency is key. Intention is key, correct? Now there is, of course, some rules that you must also follow, but when it comes down to insurance, let's look at the insurance side. You know, typically they'll say, of course, I studied this uh, topic and I've asked many people in regards to this topic, uh, life insurance, and every every single person that I asked, life insurance is not haram to have, right? Uh, it, for many people that I've spoken to. Now, of course, we can definitely have different uh, opinions and different scholars think in many different ways, but the ones who right. I asked, they said it's not haram. Now, why do some people think it's haram, right? Oh, because you should put the, you know, if I pass away, you know, I should put the faith in my God that, you know, my family will be taken care of. And absolutely, right? Absolutely, great. Now, at the same time, you have a direct duty to your family to provide for them, right? You have a direct duty sure. to your family to provide to them. You have the direct duty uh, to be able to protect them. You have the direct duty to preserve uh, your family and their and wealth and et cetera, right? So for me, it was understanding, okay, if I'm going to sit down with a client, if I'm going to sit down with a family, transparency is key. Them understanding exactly what they are receiving, the risks of it, the pros of it, the cons of it, complete transparency, everything out on the table that's where I believe is very important for people to understand. You can get into insurance business, but the main fact is you must be transparent. You must know what you're doing and you must tell them the pros and you must know the tell them the cons. And from there, that individual can make a decision, right? Uh, it's like fair trade, right? One for one, M meaning that if I'm having a, a dealing with an individual, right? If I lose, he can also lose. If I win, he can also win as well, right? Uh, that's that's the main concept of it. But when, with my speaking with many different people and having an understanding of insurance and life insurance in general, uh, many of them have told me, no, it's not haram. And then, of course, you have some of them that will say some of them are haram, some of them are not. Um, and again, it's, it's who you have that conversation with. We, uh, we must know also as well, uh, our scholars, we don't look at them as prophets. We look at them as advisors, right? Professions, professionals in their field, right? Because that is not my world. Um, you know, as, as you may know, uh, as, as when you are going out there embarking on your faith, you're constantly learning, you're constantly wanting to improve, you're constantly trying yep. to unpack and understand it more. So I'm still in that process as well of understanding it more, unpacking it more. Uh, when, but I, when we came down, you know, we run an agency and, and we have a lot of, uh, 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 we run an agency out there in Michigan and, you know, we have a lot of uh, uh, Muslim, um, conservative Muslims as well who, who do our business. I think it's more so of them understanding exactly, be transparent with the person you're sitting in front of and making sure they understand exactly what they're receiving. You know, there's, there's, uh, I, 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 I've traveled the world when I was in the Marine Corps and, and now I'm in the insurance business, I get to travel the world again, just in a much different context and much better accommodations. And I'm starting to see things a lot differently now, now from the lens of an entrepreneur, from the lens of a capitalist, from the lens of somebody in the insurance business. And uh, there, there's, there's, and I also want to project this to, to politics. In politics, you're going to have your conservatives. In politics, you're going to have your liberals. Uh, I gather the same thing has happened right now in faith and religion, where there's there's conservatives and there's liberals within even side faith. And you just, where do you find yourself? Where do you find the pros? Where do you find the cause? And where do you find yourself in your own walk in your faith? And 
I often say this to a lot of people in the Christian faith. I said, you know, God didn't, came, Jesus didn't come here to establish a religion. He came down here to establish a relationship. And based on that individual relationship between, between you and God through Jesus is how we are supposed to live out our faith. And sometimes people get wrapped up in, well, this is what my pastor said. This is what my church does, da, 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 da. And they remove themselves from their own individuality as it relates to their their relationship with their creator. Is there something like that uh, also similar to yeah. to those of the Muslim faith? So, uh, again, yeah, absolutely. So my understanding, so when you look at, the, you know, the word Muslim, right? Muslim, it, it means aslama, meaning that it means someone who submits their will to their creator. Right, so Muslim is not a religion in a sense; it's more of someone that submits their will to their creator, right? Yeah. And uh, Islam is, of course, the practice. And now, when we think about it, there's very, there's a lot of similarities when we talk about religion, right? As you may say, right. my my grandfather, grandfather, God, right, great great grandfather, right? right. Um, and and really, the context of of the of the um, the Islamic uh, faith is simple, very simple. It's uh, believe in one creator, believe in one creator, the creator of the heavens and the earths, uh, the creator who created everything. Um, and uh, he does not have any partners, he does not give birth, he does not eat, he does not sleep, he does not have brothers, he does not have sisters, he does not have uh, relatives. So in that context, now when you think about it, what is, what is really the, Isl the Islamic faith speaking? Well, it says, God sent down messages through many different types of prophets during that time, right? Sure. Uh, we believe in Abraham, we believe in David, we believe in Moses, we believe in Jesus, peace be upon him. We yeah. believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And, and the Islamic religion is simple. It's, uh, uh, all these uh, all these prophets came down with a message uh, from their creator, and that message was there for that specific time. And then, and then the last message was brought down was was the Quran, and was that, that was the last message from the Prophet Muhammad, which was the final messenger in, in that sense. So that's what we we respect prophet. We don't worship prophets, right? They're a prophet, so we don't worship idols. We don't worship people. We don't worship prophets. We worship one creator, our God. So that's kind of the basics of of, of the religion. Now. When we talk about now, nowadays, a lot of things have, you can say, changed. Where I find myself today, obviously, you know, I believe a lot in, you know, you have to, you, of course, we're sinners, right? None of us are perfect. Where I find For myself sure. today is I'm on a I'm constant quest of becoming better. You know, when I think about back then, coming up as a youngster, my parents were, my mother was, was really, my mom, my mom prayed five times a day. I watched her pray five times a day. Uh, I watched her fast during the month of Ramadan, right? I, I, I started fasting in the month of Ramadan when I was seven years old. Uh, my mom wow. taught me. To, my mom taught me how to pray when I was seven years old. You know, so you know, it was really embedded in me from 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 when I was younger. But also, my mom told me, "I want you to go out and I want you to learn. I want you to read. I want you to get mm -hmm. educated on these manners, right? I want you to learn the different yep. types of faiths, right? And really having that curiosity because we must know each other to be able to live with each other. And where I find myself today is constantly in that quest to become better, learning better. You know, obviously, I like I said, I'm not a scholar yet. Uh, I'm not the perfect. Uh, 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 Muslim, I would not say I am, but I'm on the constant quest of learning how to become better. I mean, I haven't drank a sip of alcohol in almost two and a half years, um, you know. So I'm, of course, I'm trying to eliminate bad habits and put them in good habits. Me and my wife well, are, you know, we're constantly going out there, uh, learning how to, you know, constantly you know, try to my best to constantly pray. It's very important. So I find myself right now in the process of becoming that individual. Now, when we talk about liberal or conservative Muslims, you know. It's a very different types of, of ideologies because sometimes we you can't ignore the rules, right? Rules mm -hmm. are the rules, right? Now, of course, there's sure, levels sure. of sins. There's levels of different sins. There's levels to, you know, certain sins that you have. Obviously, you can't murder, right? You know, the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, killing one innocent person is like killing all of humanity, right? So that's a very big set, you know, thinking about, you know, drinking. Now, why can't we drink? Because it preserves your mind. Right? Uh, why can't we? Why? Why can we gamble? Because it preserves your wealth, right? Uh, why do a man and a woman need to to be married with each other, right? Because it preserves humanity, right? So it's constantly in, in, in the quest of preservation. That's kind of what I've been learning. Of course, I'm still learning. I'm still talking to many different people. I'm still improving. Mm -hmm. uh, I find yeah. myself today, um, you know, learning from many different from the liberal side and from the conservative side. And what I've seen the difference was. Sometimes on the liberal side, oh, it's okay to do this, it's okay to do that, it's okay to do this, right? But then, you know, you, they're kind of making their own type of uh, religion, right? Which is sure. not okay, right? Now, right. when we talk about, like, my First mother... do that too. Right, we all do it, of course, right? We all do it. Right. Now, yep. but at the same time, there's many people who follow their faith. If you think about the, the, the Islamic faith, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of Muslims around the earth that memorize the Quran from cover to cover. 
And if, he, if someone was to recite a passage from the Quran, from cover to cover, and someone was sitting next to them, they will know if they made a mistake in the recitation, right? So wow. there is there is a lot of uh, those, you know, the conservatives. And we talk about conservatives. What is it really conservatives? Follow your faith. Pray five times a day, right? The five pillars of his song. Charity, prayer, right? Going to, the, to Mecca to do your pilgrimage, okay? And also understanding there's, see, I like to, I like to always say this, uh, the, 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 basically the declaration of faith, who you are, right? And there's understanding if you're following your tenets of your religion properly, but also understanding that if I am committing sin, I understand that. But most importantly, are you repenting to your God? Right? Because God always says, Astaghfirullah, meaning that repent to me and I'll constantly set down the blessings to you, right? Like, it's funny. Right. There's a story about, uh, you know, when, 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 when with Satan, right? It's like, you know, Satan was like, I'm, uh, to the to God, I'm always going to try to make these souls sin, sin and sin. And then God tells Satan, he goes, and I'm going to constantly forgive, forgive, forgive when they repent, right? So our, our religion is really a big, big about uh, f uh, repenting um, and also constantly improving. So, you know, I, I, think it, I think that I just don't like when people ignore so certain rules just to, to better their life or to have their life in a specific way like they want it. Like, oh, you know, if I'm struggling with money, I'm not going to go out there and, you know, open up a, you know, I, I want to say a strip club, for example, right? That's not what I'm sure. going to do. I'm gonna go if I'm, I'm gonna go out there. Yeah, and, exactly right. It's hot on money, I, or, or profit through all call sales, or profit through something that may harm people, right? I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna go work hard and find something that is good for society and good for my community, and provide them with that and to make money, right? So I don't. I, sometimes some people make excuses to, oh, you know, I'm not making money. I'm gonna go try to make money here or selling drugs and things of that nature. No, go out there, work hard, find a great way to make okay. money and help your community. Okay, so. So what 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 is the haram side of the argument come, coming from your Muslim community, where they say that insurance is haram because it's based either on insurance or because there, there's some arguments here. There's a there's a pro positive to it. There's a negative to it. Let, let's start. You know, let's start unpack it. I mean, we're thinking about security. We're thinking about peace of mind of what life insurance does uh, for someone who buys a policy. But many argue in the Muslim community that it's haram. So what's your take on that? Uh, my take on it from what I've, you know, obviously whenever I've had some conversations, I did some research is the interest, b interest that's based behind life insurance, right? Okay. Uh, when we yep. think about interest, you know, um, interest is something where it could hurt some people. Like if you really think about it, uh, and I'll revert back to the, to the question exactly. When you think about in, uh, interest, you know, well, back in, back in 2008, remember 2007, 2008, when that whole housing market crash happened? Sure, great, great, great recession, recession for sure. Right. It was basically people getting mortgages on their pets in a sense, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, so yeah. anyone could qualify for a mortgage. So the, 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 basically people were, these banks were giving out these loans to these families and knowing that they did not qualify or can't afford this home knowing that they may default on this home. Make sense? So yeah. not only knowing that they're going to default on that home and charge them interest and basically, oh, we're going to take that, that house away from them because we know they're going to default because they don't qualify for it. Basically setting them up for what? Disaster. Setting them up to fail. Setting them up for them to pay their hard-earned money into something, right? And then from the, out, from the back end of it, they know that they're going to fail and collect that just to make their portfolio look good. Right? So they're okay. harming okay. someone else in the process of creating their wealth, right? And okay. uh, basically, what it's, it's with us when it comes to interest, if you're harming other people, right, just for the or sole purpose of creating your own wealth, that becomes a major sin, right? Like, for example, uh, if I'm an employee, I'm an employee and I'm working for my employer. Let's say I'm an employee and I don't have nothing to do, right? Let's say I have nothing to do. I finished my day, it's three o'clock, but I, I'm, so, I'm supposed to be working until five, right? So I sit there and I don't work. You know what, that's okay. actually weird. That's, that's also a, a, a sin because you are taking advantage of your employer because he's paying you and you're on the job and you're not doing what, you're, what the agreement was between you and your employer. So basically you are earn, taking away his hard earned money because you're not working, right? So now do you call your employer and tell him, hey, Mr. Employer, I have nothing to do right now. Uh, what would you like me to do? If your employer tells you, hey, Haas, no problem. You know, you can take the time to relax for the next two hours. Or no, Haas, can you at least complete this task, right? Because it's his money 
on the line. It's his business that he that you guys agreed that he you were gonna do your job and he was gonna pay you, right? So there has to be that form of a of, of fair compensation. Now, when it comes to insurance, the, the uh, say well the interest that you that you incur that you're able to receive from in, from insurance with certain types of policies is it coming from a place that's forbidden? So are you earning interest from a certain source that is forbidden? Like when you think about the Balenciaga story, right? The, the very popular yeah. story now coming out today, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. We've seen that. Now you've seen that. You've seen that Balenciaga, what they were doing, their messaging of what they were doing, right? And you know now that this messaging, they're basically telling you this is who we are as people, right? This is what we're the message that we're trying to add. If you still go out there and buy their shoes and support them, right? Basically, you're just you're 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 okay with what they're doing. You're just as guilty as they are, right? So I remember Naveen, she's like, she cut up all, she cut up all my Balenciaga stuff, all my shoes. We threw them away. I'll never support wow. them again, right? Because okay. if I'm supporting yeah. them, that means that I am supporting their their basically their whatever they're trying their that message they're trying to have, right? Their child exploitation and pornography. Yeah, yeah, exactly, correct. So the same thing yep. when it comes to insurance and interest, they say, well, if I'm earning interest from a place that's necessarily from, but like if I'm earning interest from an alcohol-based business, if I'm earning interest from, you know, some type of, a, you know, sex business or whatever the case may be, right? You cannot be able to be, use that money to be able to feed your family with it because it's something that's already yep. in from you. When it comes to insurance, for many conversations that I have, um, it is not uh, that kind of interest where you are committing any type of sin or anything of that nature, right? It's, it's basically a trade. I'm going to pay you my premium. And if something yep. happens to me, God forbid, my family is going to receive X, Y, Z, right? And then there's, right. a, there's, there's a communication. There's an agreement there, right? Because it's really about the contracts and, and them also understanding the pros and the cons. So I think there's just in our community, there's so many people that say, yes, it's haram. Yes, it's frowned upon. Yes, it's that. And if people just take it and run with it, instead of going out there and doing their own research or having a conversation with qualified people, right? So I think sometimes, as, as you may know, people have a lot of opinions on many different things. Like sometimes we'll say, like, you know, man, we say, we say this. Husband and wife shouldn't work together. Who said that? Right? Who said that? I, I still yeah, want to know right. who said that. It's just something somebody says and it just trickles towards everybody else. So I, with my understanding yeah. and with me talking to many scholars, and yes, it's not frowned upon. I think we need to educate our communities on that. And, and yeah. that's why for me, it's, it's important for me to, to, to be involved in this industry and this business so I can go out there, educate them, help people, and, and be that uh, beacon of light and tell them, look, this is what it is. This is how it works go down with all the pros and cons and put them in the right position so they can basically have that trust with me. I'm, I'm, uh, I've, I've been Googling this and researching this, you know, throughout my career because, you know, over two decades of, do of, of doing this, I've run across a lot of people of the Muslim faith. And this website here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put it here on the screen, islamicfinanceguru.com. It says, there are a number of benefits to insurance. Here's a positive app. As we got negative perspective to it. Here's this positive perspective to it. It says, there are a number of benefits to insurance, some of which are ex, uh, are excellently outlined. In a nutshell, the point is that insurance, while well, it may have some degree of garar, right? Can you can you translate garar, G-H-A-R-A-R? Yeah, so I'm not completely, completely uh, uh, versed on that, um, on that especially. It's also that in, with riba, there's many different kinds, right? There's different kinds of, okay. of riba and the way they incur interest, right? Um, in okay. that sense, I would definitely have someone more qualified to answer that one. Uh, with when it comes to that uh, context, I actually have a meeting tomorrow with a with a scholar. Actually, I talked to him today, yesterday. Good. So, um, we have a really in depth meeting tomorrow, um, and we're going to be going over a lot of the, the different conversations. And because, of course, I'm always uh, curious on that. But with riba, there's different kinds of riba. For example, if I if, if let's say somebody is in need in my community, right, Matt, and uh -huh. he tells me Haas. Uh, I'm in need. I need to, uh, I, there's, you know, I'm in need. I'm coming to you with need, right? I say, okay, no problem. If I'm able to help this individual and I, he said, I let him borrow, let's just say a hundred dollars. Okay. This person is yep. in need. I give him a hundred dollars. He goes back to his house. Let's just say he comes to pay me back. Okay. Now let's say in a week he comes to pay me. Oh, Haas, I don't have the money. Oh, okay. It's going to be $110. And then the second week, uh, Haas, I don't have yeah. the money. Oh, okay. It's going to be $20. $20. Third week, yeah. so, right? I cannot yes. do that to the individual in need. I cannot exploit someone who's in need. I cannot take advantage of another human being, correct? So if someone's coming to me with a need and I provide him with that need, I'm not going to take any type of interest from him or any type of, you know, exploit him for because he's down on his luck. So I wouldn't want to take yep. advantage of him during that time because I'm not, right? So he comes back, here's the $100. 
It was done in us. Fair, yep. great. I helped him and he repaid me. And of course, for gotcha. me, I'll go by the concept of, look, I let you borrow money. Okay. This is my, this is my way of charity. Sure. Right. And I, of course, yep. I'm not doing it like he's a charity case, but I'm doing it like no problem, no words. Yeah. So that would be the so concept. Get out, get out. So garat is an Arabic word that is associated with uncertainty, deception, and risk. Uh, it has been described as the sale of what is not yet present. So if we go back to this definition here in the Islamic finance guru, right? It's a it's a uh, that insurance has some degree of garat in it, but it is still justifiable given that there's great benefit to it, and that our sh Sharia, I yeah. saying that right? Yes. Yeah. That our Sharia historically does allow for some garar heavy transactions if the benefit outweighs the harm. Mm -hmm. Interesting yes. perspective there, uh, what he said. Absolutely. Right? And so, um, you know, so, now let me ask let me ask this question. Let's say somebody doesn't buy insurance, okay? You, you have uh, some of the Muslim faith as well, it's against, it's against my faith, it's against, against my religion. Okay, you don't buy insurance. Sadly, that person passes away. How then do they come up with the cash? Because you, you, you to die, it's not free these days. Yeah. Right now, you don't pay for it. Your family pays for whatever you have left over. Yes. So what happens then when somebody in the Muslim faith doesn't buy insurance and now everybody has to raise cash, they have to sell assets to pay for the funeral? What what happens in, in the Muslim community when, when that community when that happens? Absolutely. The the, the Muslim community is a is a is a is like a brotherhood, right? Uh especially with for sure. Uh, with many different areas around the world. And you know, it's it's a brotherhood of you know, especially where I grew up in, in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, largest Arab American population in, uh, in, in, you know, in the country, uh, you know, most the very, very big Muslim population as well. And when one person goes through some type of issue, you'll see 10, 20, 30, 40 families ready to be there by their side. Right. Uh, because we right. understand that brotherhood, right? We don't look at color. We don't look at, uh, you know, uh, basically what country you're from, right? That doesn't mean nothing to us. We don't see color. We don't see, you know, where you're from and what country you're from. We don't see any of that. We see that you are a brother in our faith. You are a brother in our community. You are a sister in our community. You are a sister in our faith. And we want to come out there and help. Right. So many times the community okay. gets together and helps a less fortunate family. Correct. Um, some mosques as well will will go out there and, and, and help the families as well. And now we now we're seeing a lot of GoFundMe's today in our communities as well. You know, and I don't necessarily uh, agree with that. You know what I mean? And some families have to do what they have to do. It's very difficult for a family to put their significant other mom, dad, grandparents on GoFundMe pages. It's different, right? Think about it, right? It's like, you yeah. know, we need help. Yeah. We didn't prepare. So a lot of times the community gets together if they don't have insurance or for example, you know, the mosque may, may, may do something how to help people out as well through different uh, donations. But I always say this very, very, very importantly. I think when you are a man going out there and taking care of your family uh, and, and you, you also are, you're going out there and building, you're buying houses, you're buying a car, you're you know, you're giving them a certain type of lifestyle, correct? And as a man, as a woman, if you're providing that to families, you need to also be responsible to protect that stuff, right? To protect them from any loss. Because you're right. providing them with this life. And sure. you want to have the same type of life when you are gone, correct? Yep. So, you know, for me, it's I think it's in, important for us to educate our uh, uh, communities about the life insurance. And when, when someone passes away and they don't have life insurance, yeah, there's many times families, they, there is some families who do, you know, have certain type of arguments and certain types of issues. Um, but in the Muslim, uh, Islamic faith, I would say, they do have that uh, camaraderie and that closeness to help one another uh, and brothers and sisters of faith. So I think a lot of times that's what, what happens when someone doesn't have insurance. You know, it's interesting because I, I, I go to the other side because I'm thinking about if you're going to be in America today and, I'm, uh, and, and you're in a Muslim faith, and you want to buy a house. If you don't have the three, four, five hundred thousand dollars of cash to buy a house, what are you gonna do? You gotta get a mortgage. Hey. Right? You gotta put a down payment on a mortgage. And then I well, if Riba is is not in alignment with your faith, then you can't buy a house. But then I go and Google some more that there's some because I in networking, I ran into somebody that says, No, I do specifically Islamic financing. Uh -huh. like, Interesting, Islamic financing. So I uh -huh. Google this earlier, and here's one thing I, I want to break down. Uh, and get your input on it. It's riba f interest free mortgages. Yeah. So interest free mortgage. Like I'm, I'm so I'm really so there's a such thing as mortgage. So they break it down. They just name it differently. So the reason why it's not uh, haram is because it breaks it down to two 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 different areas of payment. Pro there's one part of it is a profit payment. So if you're making a quote unquote monthly mortgage payment, 
is broken down to a profit payment instead of a traditional interest fee. They charge a profit payment for allowing the customer to use a company's share of the home. Yeah. Interesting. So they're they're really like uh, you know like okay. So basically, you're kind of owning my home, but the more I pay you, the more I own, the less you own. Yes. And so this payment is based on a rate competitive with the market rates home buyers are familiar with. So yes. this charge is included in monthly a monthly payment the customer the homeowner will be responsible to pay the other part of, the other part of it instead of a profit payment they can have an acquisition payment where the remaining portion of the monthly payment is the acquisition payment allowing the customer to to acquire an increasing share of the ownership in the home so the way to look at it is it looks like the same thing but this is named differently i guess to be more in alignment with how those of the uh, muslim faith uh will i guess for lack of a better term swallow this yeah, so when we talk about that kind of finance, so when you talk about the traditional, and of course, modern day to day where we live, and in uh, Islamic faith, it also says uh, that you have to buy, you know, where, wherever, where you ever, wherever you live, let's just say whatever country you live yeah. in, wherever you have uh -huh. to obey their rules and their laws, right? So oh wherever God. you live in, you obey their rules and their laws, but, and if you don't like them, and if they don't uh, mesh with what your beliefs are, move, right? So we do have to, wherever country you live in, obey by the laws and, and respect the laws of that land. Right. I think that's yeah. what's happening today. You know, when we're, we're understanding, when we're seeing all these different things happening, like the World Cup, you know, most people, we know that, oh, why can't we? They threw this whole different types of different things with the LGBT community and all this stuff up in the World Cup. But it's just respecting people's land. You know, I, I'm going there knowing they have these kind of rules. Right. So I have to respect the rules that they have because it's not my yeah. country, theirs. Right. So when you talk about yeah. Islamic finance in, in general, um, you know, when you buy a home, okay, you buy a home and think about it like this. I buy a home for $150,000, okay? I get a 30-year you know, mortgage. By the time that mortgage right. finishes, how much interest have I paid? Yeah, 300,000. Three, right, exactly. Now, yeah, now right. 300,000, and then what happens? The value of the home goes up, and then the next person that buys this home, right, is gonna be paying right. much more for it than I did. Sure, right? sure. And then go on and so on and so forth. So that has, has in, in, in many different contexts, has shown that this was dismantles the economic system in society because Basically, rich are rich, get rich, get rich, get richer, and the poor get poorer, right? Right. So that's that concept as well. On and on Islamic finance, with the more you pay into it, the more you get ownership of that house, right? But there is no uh, tapped on top of. There's no interest tapped on top of that for late payments. There's no interest tapped on top of that for certain th different things, right? So basically, yep. preserving someone, helping someone preserve their wealth rather than taking their wealth away from them from their hard-earned money that they work. Now, of course, you know there's. JP Morgan came out with this as well, where they're doing some type of uh, Islamic finance. And it's really, it's in the context of the paperwork. The funding that, uh, yeah. what, I, what I've noticed, the funding is the same, but it's uh, the, the, the legalities and the paperwork of, of that and, and the understanding of the fine print of, okay, this is where, what's going to be happening, right? So uh, it's definitely something that I, I highly encourage some of the people to look into. But the main concept is we don't, you know, the Islamic faith says do not take other people's wealth for for your own greed or your for your own wealth right uh do good business dealings with other people in fair trade Absolutely. so when 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 you when you're looking at um insurance let's forget life insurance forget for set aside life insurance for a second let's say i buy a car okay hey. and the car dealership regardless of the what your faith is if i'm if, if you're looking at a car dealership i don't care if you're christian i don't care if you're muslim if you buy this car and you finance the car you must have car insurance. Yes. Or if you, if you buy this home, you must have homeowner insurance. Uh, if you want to check into this uh, uh, emergency room, you must have some form of insurance. So other insurances, I would assume, I would presume, are they more palatable and acceptable uh, to those in the Muslim faith? And if so, then how come there's such a hard bent aspect of looking at life insurance in the same light? Absolutely. So that's, that's also one thing I always talk about, right? Like, you know, life insurance shouldn't be looked at in a bad way. And we, we got to go get there, get, get car insurance. We got to get health insurance. <laughs> uh, so we're going to get a phone and people have insurance on their phone, you know, and all these different things. And so I don't, I think sometimes this life insurance is, is because it's tied into death so much yeah. where people think that other people profit from your death and God, you know, it's, it's, and, and God doesn't want people to profit. You shouldn't profit off your death, but it's really taking care of your family. Right. And of course, is there's many different uh, verses in the Quran. There's many different things that said about taking care of your family and and doing that, and doing so. Now, when we talk about car insurance, it's you know in America you get pulled over, and right, and just in many different countries as well. And just, I mean, you get pulled over, you don't have car insurance, 
it's a law. You have to have car insurance. Yeah, right. right? You're in a ticket. We have to, we have to uh, uh, obey by the laws of the land. So we have to get car insurance. Now, of course, we have to talk about intention, right? Uh, a big part of uh, who we are is, as Muslims is you. It's your intention, right? My intention of getting car insurance is not to harm somebody else. My intention of getting car insurance is because if I get pulled over, if I have a situation that happens, I will get arrested. My toy, my car doesn't get towed, right? Uh, I don't yeah. get a ticket. So I have to abide, I obey, obey the laws of the land, correct? So right. that is my intention behind car insurance. My intention behind life insurance is to protect my family. In case if God forbid something was to happen to me, my family has the means to survive and take care of themselves, right? So it's the intention behind why I get something. Now, if my intention is to, if I knowingly know that what I'm doing is harming somebody else, that is a sin, of course, right? Because I, I can't have that intention of harming another person. So intention is a big part of it because... People don't understand what well, God knows what's in us. God knows God sees what we don't see, right? God yeah, knows our intention sure. inside. So if I am doing something in an intentional way to harm somebody else, God sees that. But if I'm doing something because I have to abide by certain laws or land, my intention is to protect my family. My intention is to protect my car or protect myself from going to jail, right? There's intention behind that. So there is some understanding behind that as well. And I know there's many different ways of explaining it, but it's the law of the land. We have to get it. We have to respect the law of the land, correct? But also, more importantly, what's our intention behind it? What's my intention behind a business dealing with another individual? If I'm selling car insurance, right? Because I know I have a lot of people uh, in our community who sell car insurance, who sell home sure. property, casualty insurance, right? And people are paying into it and their money is going somewhere else. And those insurance companies are, you know, whatever the case, I, I, I'm not sure where they, what they do. So you can't say, oh, you know, this is okay, but this is not. Right, yeah. so there okay. has to be. They're, they're both. They hey, both are okay because they're both insurance. It's just your intention behind why you're getting it, and understanding the fine print of the risks of it. Right, if, especially yeah. if you're selling insurance, if you're not telling people the pros and cons of it, and just selling them things where you're not uh, basically telling them exactly what could happen, and they're okay, like okay, these are the pros, these are possibly the cons. But what do you think? Oh yeah, I like it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, have that. Okay, great. Right, so. As long as they have that full understanding and you are transparent to them, that's it. That, that's the main point. That's a key word. Yeah, I know. Even back to this uh, um, fi uh, mortgage uh, financing here, riba uh, uh, interest free mortgage. There's even a portion here of this uh, this site that says, "Hey, man, we can still foreclose on you." <laughs> so, you know, you, you may have borrowed from us. But if you don't pay your mortgage, there is an area here that we may potentially come after you and take back the home because you didn't pay your mortgage and put you through a foreclosure process. Now, they, they say it's unethical for us to take more than just a home or the yeah. asset that was uh, created from the purchase of this mortgage. They're not going to come after you for your other assets because that's what happens in most traditional you know, uh, fi uh, um, financing um, and, and, and banking companies to give you a, to, to give you a mortgage. But yeah, there's still foreclosure. Okay, so um, some other some other thoughts here I have. When you're when you are when you're leading this charge of being a person that's building an insurance business and you're Muslim, what's your message there to the Muslim community, Haas, yes. when it comes to improving the financial level of our community? Because every every community has its has its uh uh you know, folks that want to come up and rise up in accordance with their faith. What's your message to the Muslim community? You know, God, you know, God says, you know, it says, um, God has given us the capacity. Okay. God has given you the, if God has given you the capacity to go out there and, and do something with your life, right? God does not like laziness. Okay. If God gave you all the faculties, right? Uh, the, 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 you know, when people think about it all the time, uh, God, there's people that have eyes, but they can't see. There's people that have ears, but they can't hear. There's people that have legs and they can't walk. Uh, but, but, you know, you're chosen as someone that God gave you the capacity to see, to hear, to, to taste, to smell, to walk, right? All these different things. And what are you, what are you using? What are you, what are you using that for? Right? Are you using it for, for good? Are you using it to be able to go out there and reach your capacity and impact other, the world and in a good way and, and help other people? Uh, especially going out there and taking an individual that had limiting beliefs in their life, taking an individual who was bullied, taking an individual who didn't have people believe in him, Right, and taking him in, and you believing in him, you going out there pouring into him and mentoring him and developing him into a, a better human being because someone did that for you, right? So my message to my community has always been: it's not only about showing people how to make money; 
and explaining people how to preserve their money and save and have a prosperous future for themselves and their families to reach their capacity. It's also educating them and let's get self-developed. Let's get better. Let's become better human beings, right? Uh, let's go out and reach our capacity and so God can give us our blessings, right? Um, and then you know, when we think about that, it's, it's very important to understand is you always work hard to achieve, right? You, you know, people are always trying to find the easy way out to make money, the easier way to make money. No, no. And in the Islamic faith is work hard. Work hard to get what you earn. You got to earn what you want, right? Like sometimes I think about college students that go to college and their parents pay for their college. And that, and that, and that child that, you know, that, got, that, that had their parents pay for their school ends up, what's funny, it's so funny, ends up not even skipping class, okay? As yeah. I'm not going to class. And basically what they're doing is they're robbing their parents. Yes. Their parents worked hard for yes. that money. Their uh -huh. parents went out there and, and, and did their best to go out there and, and make this money to give you a better education, but you're going and skipping class, but you're going and, and not doing that. For example, kids that get scholarships. Oh, just because you got money, so that money came from somewhere. Someone worked hard for that money, for that money, right? And then you go to school and don't even take part in that. So for me, it's like, no, we're going to show people a platform and an opportunity where you're going to earn it. You're going to go out there. You're going to work hard. You're going to get better, and you're going to go earn it. My message to my community is earning it, and my message to my community is constantly: let's go out there and earn our wealth. Let's go out there and become better human beings. Let's go out there and work hard and be a good example for other people. Not just be lazy and, and you know sit on our behinds and not do anything. Right? That's something that definitely yeah. we're, we're believing in. And of course, God does not like lazy people because he gave you the capacity. You, he chose you to give you all these faculties. Go use it. Right? But of course, yeah. also understand it might not be your time. It might not be your time. You know, we think about wisdom. We think a lot about wisdom. You think about a lot of these crypto guys that made a lot of money. Right? You, they, you know, they're sitting behind a computer. Boom. Millionaires overnight. You think a lot about these Twitch streamers. Right? Who... Boom, because they, they're on a computer, are, are multi-millionaires. They didn't go through the grind. They didn't go through the ups and downs, right? Now, of course, I'm not, I'm saying, I'm not, I'm not speaking in, you know, there's certain people I'm pretty sure that work very hard. Generally speaking, I would say they got their money pretty easy, right? In a sense, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Oh, I got this, I got this, I got this, whatever the case may be. I want to teach our community, no, we want to go out and earn what we have, work hard, but also work at hard by providing value for people and making other people's lives better. better. You know, I feel like creating your wealth if you're creating your wealth in a manner where you're helping other people get better, you're helping other putting people, their lives are better because they met you, putting them in a position to go out there and become financially free by uh, teaching. Basically, you went out there, learned something. You created a skill. You went out there, did the diligence to learn. Now you're giving it to somebody else. That's what really the message to my community is. Let's go out there. Let's all get better. Let's go out there and go out to our best self, not sit behind yep. a computer, you know, computer screen all day, sit behind in a, a video game all day, not go out there and, and, and go to, oh, you know, uh, settle for this or settle for that or settle for this. Let's go out there and become the best possible human beings that we can be so we can impact our community, our kids, of course, through the will of our creator. Uh, God, no matter what, I always say this. Um, I've lived by this my, my whole life. We do, you do your part every single day. You grind, you work hard, you do everything you can every single day. What's for you will be for you. What's, what's not for you will never be for you. Right. So it's in that sense that, that God, what, what God believes, and there's always timing for certain things. You think about this. If you give me, if you gave me a million dollars when I was 18 years old, probably not going to go so well. <laughs> Good luck. Right? It's probably not going to go so well. Right. But you give me now, you know, you, I earn a million dollars because I know what it took to make that million dollars. I know the, the, the late nights and early mornings. I know the sacrifice. I know the hard work that went behind that. I know I earned it. You treat that million dollars completely differently. Right. Uh, and, and I feel like that's my messaging to my community is let's go out there and earn it and provide value to people in a, in a, in a manner where hopefully God is, is, is happy with us. Uh, because at the end of the day, that's the reason why we're on here is to worship our creator and to go out there and, and be good, a good image to our society and to our community. I love it, man. Hey, you know, I'm, I'm reflecting as you've been talking and reflecting that even in the Bible, in Deuteronomy 8.18, it's a verse that says, God has given us the power to create wealth. And, uh, uh, oh, by the way, even in the Quran, uh, you guys even recognize even King Solomon and King David. Yes. They're, 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 right? Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, you know, it's uh, Jesus is glorif uh, Jesus' name is mentioned more in the Quran than the Prophet Muhammad's name, peace be upon him. Is. So Jesus, wow. peace be upon him, is mentioned more. Woman, and Mary is the only woman mentioned in the Quran, right? So there's other, you know, when, yeah, it's, uh, if, you, if there's a lot of people that dive deep into this uh, and, and they really understand exactly 
uh, what the you know the fates have how actually similar. And I think a lot of the fates they they want to understand each other, but also how can we bridge that gap, right? How can we bridge that gap yeah, and yeah. and understand what we each other think? And you know, when I think about the Islamic faith. We, you know, if you don't believe in Jesus, you can't be a Muslim. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a wow. that's something that I think uh, many people uh, don't understand. You cannot be a Muslim if you don't believe in Jesus. You that's know? a shocker to a lot of people in the Christian faith. I appreciate you educating us on that, man. Absolutely. You know, they, and, and they also they believe Jesus is, uh, you know, Jesus will come back, and then so the same thing like the Christian faith. So, you know, it's a lot of uh, you know us understanding. There's a lot of similarities that we have. Yeah. Um, and uh, of course, we can. Uh, agree to disagree on certain things at the end of the day our yeah. job as muslims is to respect other people's beliefs um and as long as and and we respect i respect other people i respect their beliefs and their follow uh they follow their you know i rather someone believe in god than not believe in god i feel like that's that's the kind of relationships i like to have yep. with people yep and not only respect but also learn uh, yes. and i think those yeah. of you watching this right now i think today the audience won i think today i think you shine a massive perspective and on the, on the Muslim faith, a lot of people, uh, whether you're a Muslim watching this right now or you're not, you may be Catholic, you may be Christian, you may be Jewish, you may be Mormon, but I think today you learned. And uh, I think what bridges that gap, Haas, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but uh, I think what bridges the gap, which bridged the gap between me and you is the fact that we can be capitalists, the fact that we can be entrepreneurs, the fact that we can take this advantage, uh, take the advantage of the system called free enterprise. And uh, listen, man, if there's, if there's one race we care about, it's the human race. Yes. If there's one color we care about, it's, it's the color green. <laughs> that that kind of makes uh, the world go around. And uh, over 2,000 verses, in the, even in the Holy Bible, even the two, over 2,000 verses plus verses about money and handling of possessions and pride are in the Bible. Over 2,000 verses, but yet only 500 verses about faith and prayer are in the Bible. So kind of God, God has even tried to tell us even through the Bible how much money could be a positive or a big negative if we mishandle it or what a blessing it could be if we do handle it and steward over it properly. So Haas, with that being said, man, I appreciate you, man, investing a little bit of time here and making an appearance on the Seven Figure Squad because not only are you making multiple, multiple, you know, six-figure type of income, but you're also helping other people do the same. Yes. So uh, with that being said, Haas, where can people find more information about you and reach out to you if they want to? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, Haas, H-A-S-S dot B-O-U-S-I, Haas dot Busi. Uh, I'm on Instagram. Uh, we're working on it right now on a YouTube channel as well. Uh, working on a podcast as well to get more awareness on, uh, of course, business, lifestyle. We're going to be talking a lot about lifestyle, business, maybe some, you know, some uh, faith, some religion as well. I'm very, I'm, I've been very curious about many different things lately. And I think I want to, uh, I think I have a voice that I want to go out there and talk to people. And I want to, I want to understand other people's perspectives. And I think the best way of doing it is like yourself. And you're someone that I look up to in regards to the content area and business area and as industry as a human being. One of the most humble people I've ever met in my life is you, Matt. And I appreciate you for having sure. me on. And of course, I am no scholar. I am no scholar in religion. I'm an, an individual, an everyday Muslim that's going out there and trying to be my best self and learning. And hopefully, you know, if, if people watch this, then, you know, they want to have their own, uh, they want to give some uh, opinions and or they want to give their their point of view. I think we'll, that'll be amazing as well. And we are, I definitely appreciate yeah. that. I'm in the process of learning. But uh, thank you so much, Matt, for your time. And uh, we are looking yeah. forward to see what the future holds. For sure. And my, man, more parts. If you need any help on doing that, you know where to call. You know yes, where sir. to call. You know, you got my number. And uh, and for those of you watching this, uh, I hope that you learned a lot today. You know, the last thing you want to do, by the way, I'm not a pastor. I'm not a scholar. I don't have a master's in divinity or anything like that. I'm just a, I'm just a, you know, some Joe in the church trying to figure out this thing called faith and money and finance and stewardship and all the, how to be a better person and how to be a better contributor to our community. So uh, I'm, yeah, I'm sure many of you watching this feel the same way too about Hasbusi and his work too as well. So if you got any questions, comments, feedback, you agree with us, you don't agree with us. I know I did a reaction video to this with with uh, uh, Habib, the, the MMA fighter just retired because he doesn't want to make any money through Reba too as well. Caused a lot of controversy and comments in the comment section. And I wonder, what are your thoughts, questions? Put in the comment section to below as well. We, we, listen, we're looking to learn. We're looking to grow. We're not perfect. Perfect perfection is not walking in water is not our standard. It's improving, that is. And if you're part of that uh, mindset, the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel is for you. A YouTube channel dedicated to help you think like a millionaire, strategize like a millionaire, so therefore you could become a first-generation cash flow millionaire too as well. That being said, on behalf of House Boosie, Southern Florida, money smart guy from Dallas, Texas. Until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smarts, and be money smart today.